Okay, welcome to Board Game Binge, the place where we bring you bite-sized, bingeable board game content from across the industry. I'm your host, James Staley, and today we're chatting with Brendan McCaskill, lead designer of the Stars of Akarios, which was successfully funded on Kickstarter this past April with over 7,500 backers. Brendan, welcome to the binge. How are you hey, doing? Thanks for having me, James. Doing well. Well, thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, I, I want to do a little quick shout out to, uh, to Dan Kazmaier for introducing us. Uh, after we had our interview with him, he's like, hey, there's another Canuck you got to talk to, man. We got we got another Canuck. This guy's got a lot of information for you. So I'm uh, so glad that uh, you're able to join us. I can see that you're in the middle of space or something behind you there. We got like the Enterprise I am. going there's, on. Yeah. There's a big space battle happening behind me. There's this, this is the Gnosis. There's some synthetic ships over there. It's chaos. It's great. Now, let's talk a little bit about this campaign before we get too deep into it. Yeah. So, I pulled some stats today. Correct me if I'm wrong on these stats, and I think you've, they're probably even updated from here, but I have 7,542 backers totaling $920,000 Canadian, in Canadian dollars. Let me just uh, preface that. Yeah. Uh, off a $50,000 goal. Uh, that is an incredible achievement. Uh, first of all, congratulations. That's amazing. Uh, hey, is that is that correct, or has it grown even a little bit further beyond that, or...? Yeah, I think you can increase the number by like 300. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, you've so crossed the million mark. We've, we've crossed the million, yeah. We're, we're, I think we're around 1.1 at the moment oh, wow. for sales. I yeah, want to actually okay. just share my screen really quickly on your, uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't have it up yet. I'll get it up in a second. On your Kickstarter, uh, when I was going through the uh, your pledge levels, I noticed that you were at, your and this actually surprised me. Your base level was a hundred and five dollars. Your Canadian, yeah, Canadian, but still hundred five dollars, yeah. which is not I a small it, number. In, important part though, the Canadian piece, yeah. Yeah, Canadian. Okay, and yeah. uh, see with me for a second, right? So yeah, totally. 100, 155 on level two, Canadian. Yeah. Two thirty five level three. Yes. You guys almost price this at a point where you're looking for commitment. Like you're either in the franchise and if you're in the franchise, you're coming in, yeah. you're coming in, you know, with both feet in. Um, I see a lot of Kickstarters where people start with a smaller pledge level kind of as the base level. And then they incrementally, you know, get up to large yeah. levels. You guys didn't, you started right at the, uh, you know, your lowest pledge level, right at $105 uh, Canadian. What, what led to that decision? Uh, kind of, I would say the, the, the biggest thing that led to that decision, just let me pull up is so so the main core box it's going to be uh just over 10 pounds of okay. wow of, of content <laughs> um, right so um by the time everything's said and done in the core box there's 17 miniatures there's nine player ships and um and eight actually there's there's more there's there's 18 miniatures um because we we've added uh added another one with the stretch goal Wow. And I think, I think at the top there, it says there's like over a thousand cards. Um, and then we have, you know, just, just loads, loads of stuff. You know, we, we kind of went into this where, you know, a big, a big game, right. Where there's kind of a lot of production and a lot of stuff happening. We wanted to kind of eliminate a lot of the, um, I guess, fiddliness that might come in, in some of these types of games. And so sure. we decided to dual layer all of our maps mats and so you know all the player boards they're they're dual layer chip boards yep. where there's nice beautiful slots for everything you track every icon and status with with cubes as opposed to individual icon markers sure um, versus like a punch out or something like that exactly right? so yeah. yeah we're like the only punch outs in the game are for the enemies in the core box just the, the little standees uh, the enemy ships so and for anybody you know, we, watching, I've been I, the whole time you've been talking. I'm, I've been scrolling, and I still haven't got to the end of your Kickstarter page. Like there's, yeah, there's just there's, an there's, immense amount of content. Well, so that's the other thing too, right? It's like yeah. you know, we we recognize that someone's shelling out hundred five dollars. They they want to have something that's worth hundred and five dollars, and so we were we actually uh, I I think, and I don't know if this is right, but I think we actually could have priced higher. Um, I think we yeah. actually priced ourselves. I would say about ten dollars US too low. Really? Um, yeah, you know, looking at comparable games, so our game would have more than Tainted Grail uh, does, like as far as like content wise. Sure. Yep. Um, you know, there's there's other stuff that you you get into um, when you get there, but you know, you Gloomhaven is is massive. 
um, they're $99 plus their shipping on sure. top of that, right? 99 US plus their wow. shipping. Okay. So you're, you're looking at like 140 Canadian plus shipping. Um, so you're getting there on your level two, essentially, right? Your level two is yeah. kind of the equivalent of that. Now this is one to four players. Um, yeah. And it, the way it's described when I was kind of reading and watching the videos was it's space exploration, there's combat, there's planet exploration. To really dumb it down, it's almost like a choose your own adventure. And I think I was reading somewhere that there's like 50 plus hours of story-based content that you can yeah. navigate through. So this is almost like a modern day, a modern day video games are made, but as a board game, right? Like there's yeah. so much you yeah. can do. Yeah, that's that's the goal, right? So there's we kind of built upon four pillars. Um, space combat is is the main pillar, and so it's going to be the one that is most prominent. Um, but we're also large amount of space exploration, so a little bit more macro of an activity. And then you can actually step off of your ship and explore planets and, and different moons and and you know, maybe even board an enemy ship and do like a Star Wars esque mission. Oh, that's cool. um, and, and then and then the fourth. Uh, pillar is just customization. So lots of different areas to upgrade your pilot and your ship throughout the whole um, campaign. And that customization even goes to an app. You guys have an app so somebody can actually create their own story, yeah. essentially, right? Their own scenarios. Yeah. So so the app, we, we announced the app. Um, we haven't announce a whole lot more besides what it what it does and, and basically sure. there, it, the app will do a couple things one it acts as a companion app to the game so fully voiceover of of the main storyline oh that's cool kind of, wow. yeah like like setup cues yeah um, and then and then there's this whole second part of the app which i'm i'm structuring it as a creation kit so you know how I don't know if you're like me and you played Warcraft or Starcraft and you would make your own maps and then share them with your sure. friends. This is the idea behind the uh, Starlight Creation Kit, right? So you'll make your own scenario. Maybe it's a, even a game type, which is kind of fun. We have people creating their own game types right now for Starlight and uh, and then sharing it with people and being able to vote and then download other people's um, creations and all that stuff. And so you play one to four players, which I thought was kind of neat. And another thing that I, I found very interesting, because I, I assumed kind of coming in, this is going to be one of those games that takes an entire day to play, right? Which for me is usually, I'm yeah, no. usually on those games just because I don't have that kind of time available right now uh, yeah. with kids and so forth. I was surprised. It said 20 minutes per player. That, that's actually not unreasonable. Yeah. That's a, that, that's, that's a good time for playing games. So this is something that you don't have to be like a really hardcore gamer to play and enjoy. It's something that the average board gamer would probably uh, get into. Yeah. You know, I think the average board gamer would would get into it. And then if, if they're captivated by the story and by like the potential, then they'll stick around for the campaign, right? You know, there's there's a certain ask that where we're asking people to invest 50 hours sure. into, into a campaign, right? Where they see something from the start to the end. And so in that sense, it almost pushes you out of the, the average game market. Sure. But you know, if, if you get together with a group of people, you can you can play a couple rounds in, in an evening um, where, and, you know, I'll, I'll come back to some of the comparisons because Gloomhaven is the dungeon crawling game, right? Right. Uh, a game like that with four players, you're going to spend three hours doing a single scenario. Um, and then if and then if you die, unfortunately, you have to go back and, and do the scenario again, which, you know, I did it. It's fun in some ways, but <laughs> not not in this game. There's there's no repeating scenarios in uh, Akarios. So you're the lead designer uh, of yeah. is Oom Games. Is that how we pronounce it? Yeah, Oom Games uh, stands for Out of My Mind. Nice. And so, how how did you come you know come up with this idea? Like, where did you start off with the mechanic? Did you start off with the story? You know, it's always interesting to me how these things come together. In some cases, I see people that will have a mechanic and then they say, okay, let's come up with uh, something to kind of skin this with. In yeah. other cases, I've seen people who start off with a story and say, okay, now how can we best serve the story in a, in a game form? Yeah, and more so started off with what I wanted um, to play. And I wanted to play a space adventure game uh, that was persistent and had upgrades and there were no games on the market. Um, and so, well, I guess if there's nothing out there, I should make it myself. And so I started making it and thankfully there was somebody crazy enough who, when I pitched the game to, he's like, yep, I'll, I'll fund the creation of it. And, uh, now here we are, here we are. Oh, that's so. awesome. How <laughs> long did it take you to 
make this game? Um, you know, it, it depends because there's there's different levels, and anyone who's created games as like a, a side hobby knows that there's levels of investment and periods. Uh, sure. I'd say full time work from start to finish, two years, and that's not just me. That'd be a team of people. Sure. Um, and then there'd be another year before that where it's just me kind of um, ironing out some like main core mechanics and some general storyline stuff. So three years, that's quite the investment then. It must be uh, amazing yeah. to see this baby finally kind of come to fruition yeah. and not just come to fruition, but it was a huge, huge success. Like, yeah. is this where you expected to land or where kind of where was your yeah, head? So where did you guys think you would land? Optimistically, I was, I was hoping for a three to 400. Um, and so we did, I think 200 and a bit in the first day. And that was, uh, that was quite surreal. So, uh, job probably hit the floor. I'm sure. Oh yeah. I was excited. I didn't think we would get close to a million. And so to be like on the cusp of a million at the end of the, of the 28 days or whatever it was, was, was fantastic. Now, how has COVID impacted you guys? Has that impacted you at all during this yeah. process? Yeah. You know, I think it's impacted everyone, um, in certain ways. We were pretty quick and upfront that people could pledge a dollar anytime during the campaign and be open to uh, late pledging until Christmas. Um, we weren't going to penalize people for and like capitalize on FOMO. And, sure. you know, we, if we did, we probably would have had higher numbers with FOMO. I was like, what's the point? Like people are hurting and, and out of jobs. Sure. Um, and then just like anyone, you know, we, we've seen some refunds because of COVID related circumstances, but all in all, I've been like, pretty pretty um fortunate just to see how our community has just like it's really been a positive time and positive group in in a, a place if kickstarter is not always a positive place and so sure. to, see, to see a positive uh community kind of grow out of the stars of Akarios is just like fantastic yeah you always always tell people ignore the trolls ignore the yeah. trolls they're always coming they're always knocking but just uh try to ignore them it's tough uh, now, this isn't your first trip to the rodeo, right? So you had a, a game, I think it was called The Last Man Standing or something like that? Or... Yeah, Last last One Standing, the last Battle Royale board game. Now, you hit 29,000 on that campaign. Okay, uh, cool. And now uh, this one, you hit 920,000. So <laughs> what's the difference? Whoa, what changed? <laughs> uh, yeah, so last one standing I, oh, I should even look at those numbers when did i make that four years ago five years ago so, something like that sure um and so that was my first like full foray into making games you know i kind of diddled around here and there but and and i was familiar with like not just monopoly and settlers but like games and so i was kind of getting into games more um so that was my first foray into it and uh and really that started with a different thought and the thought was I, I would love to kickstart something and yeah. I was like I love board games okay maybe these things can like go together and Fortnite was just taking off in popularity and I was like okay hey maybe I can like capitalize on the Fortnite success and I didn't really capitalize on it I think it was a wash at the end of the day it didn't make any money it didn't lose any money but uh you know it was it was, it was a really neat experience just to learn about the creation of a board game yeah. right learn about artists graphic design just like the whole swath of stuff and then community engagement was, was a massive thing and so there's a ton of stuff that i learned from there um but i think your question was like what's the biggest difference between there yeah. and now so besides all most of it i would say is just learning um you know there's out of that i i got the connections into oom that that i have now so the the founder of Oom Games. He actually lives in the same town I do, and he he sent me a message during the middle of my campaign for Last One Standing, asking me asking me out to coffee, and that led me to working for him a couple of years later. Uh, so Last One Standing was really the thing that kicked everything off. Um, and so when we got to Akarios, it's it was really kind of the culmination of learning, but then also recognizing I think what Starlight like, sorry like what the Kickstarter community is. Yeah. Um, and so the Kickstarter community isn't, uh, you know, I, I, I envision it mostly in two kind of categories. There's like, oh, maybe three, but you have like the, the big IP um, fun games like Exploding Kittens, Throw Throw yeah. Burrito, those types of things. Sure. And then you have these like massive like uh, production value games. So anything Awaken Realms does, right? 
um, and then, you know, Gloomhaven and all that stuff. And then, you know, you have kind of this middle area of like Euro-esque games, yeah. um, but I would envision, I don't know, maybe this is me looking from the outside. Most of those games won't go past a massive amount because they're not like thematically um, narrative driven and sure. so or, or or and miniature driven right so these thematic massive properties have have lots of miniatures in them typically yeah. and so you know to kind of to kind of recognize that and last one standing didn't actually fit any of those categories um, last one standing stood out as like a I don't know it was a game you would buy in Walmart and play with your 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 family who maybe has never played games before Sure. Um, and, and, and it wasn't necessarily a, a clever game either. So it's not like Splendor or Azul or anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, so Starlight kind of was positioned in a much different way. And then a ton of learning and some kind of financial backing behind it all. So did you find that, um, and I've actually got uh, surprised at the answer from some developers, did you did you involve the community along the way in the development or was it more of a kind of, here it is, here's the game, uh, let's, let's get rocking. Like, how did you build the community around there? Were they, yeah. were they take along for the journey or they set up that you kind of sprung it on them with, with the launch? So I think that was something that, uh, that we did actually quite, quite well. I, I'm just looking I'm here on Board Game Geek when my first, uh, when my first post was. Um, it was in uh, April 26, 2019. So yeah, 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 a year and a bit ago. That was my, my first post about Starlight. Um, it was the first dev diary. And so from there, it kickstarted, you know, monthly-esque uh, dev diaries on BoardGameGeek. And then going into the Kickstarter, we really ramped up marketing um, a couple months before around Christmas. And uh, we really grew a community. Discord is very active. We have, you know, 500 people there and like another thousand in our Facebook group. And, and then I started live streaming um, every week leading up to the Kickstarter launch. And so there's a lot of community interaction and the community actually ended up shaping and informing lots of different things. So, yeah. you know, for example, for example, um, we sent a review copy to Mike and Steve at One Stop Co-op Shop. And, uh, and they sent me some notes They're like, Hey, we really like the game. And they just like, we wish that there would be unique abilities for each of the ships. I'm like, yeah, duh. And so, yeah. uh, like we were like, okay, we're, we're going to make that. And that was like, that was a couple weeks before, um, before the Kickstarter launch. And, you know, maybe you're listening to this like, okay, that's like, you're shoehorning something in, but, but like, no, you know, you think of the, the four pillars that we have and that fits right in with this customization and upgrading piece. Sure. Right? Um, and so we were able to do that quickly. And then I think something that has been to our benefit is that we, we do listen to the community. Mm. So uh, a bunch of our community members, they actually pointed out that they didn't like our writing in, the, in our early drafts of the narrative. And so we Ouch. were like, okay, make the commitment. <laughs> yeah, and this, this is a big deal, right? And so we, we, we took it all back um, and we grew our writing team from uh, just one person and, and I, I don't do the writing but we grew the writing team from one person and now there's like there's a team of I think four or five people um and so they, they do stuff and then and then we, we brought it back and, and people like it a lot more um and so we're we're very open um as long you know I'm not going to do something that's like completely radically out of outside of the scope sure. of Mario's as long as it kind of fits with where we're going and people have good feedback like they're the people who are going to play the game ultimately and so well, we want to we want that, to make that, sure we're listening to them that that's i gotta tell you dude not everyone would do that right especially something like writing or another one to be artwork they're very personal things right yeah. so for someone to give you feedback to say hey i think that sucks or i don't really like it or i think you should go in this direction you know it takes a lot to be able to say okay take a step back you know what are they saying here and and, and peel it apart and say okay you know, is there something we need to look at here? And uh, good for you guys to, to be able to do that. What well, kind of marketing did you guys yeah. do? Uh, so you said marketing yeah. was a big thing, especially going into December. What did you do in December that was significant? Yeah, so I think that's something that, uh, you know, if you're an indie game designer or a mid-level game designer, you kind of need to be putting more of your time and focused uh, focus on. Um, so a crash course on Facebook marketing would serve anyone really, really well. 
um, learning what a Facebook pixel is. And, um, and so that's, that's basically what we did before we launched, we had 7,000 um, follows on our Kickstarter page. Um, so people who have said, remind me when, when I launch. Yep. And then I think another, it was like three or 4,000 emails on top of that. Um, and so that was mostly through uh, a couple things, right? Mostly through Facebook marketing. And then to kind of close the loop, it was like Facebook marketing, but then it was also like that constant engagement from, from me. Um, sure. So it's like the weekly live streams, responding to messages, lots of invitations. If, if you are a designer and you do an ad, like the, the easiest hack is when people like your photos, um, Facebook gives you this prompt and it says, invite them to like your page. And so yeah. they like your photos, you click on that ad and then you have to scroll through and it's tedious. Um, and you scroll through all the people who, and you invite them to your page and you get maybe like one out of every five, uh, <laughs> but it's like you incremental growth, incremental growth, right? We went from, I think in December, you know, we had like a hundred people on our page. Um, and then we had a couple thousand when we launched. And so that was kind of like the, 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 the scaling, um, with, with Facebook. there. So it's like a garden. You're constantly having to kind of nourish it and, and get it to grow to get to the point we're ready to launch, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it is like, like that's the world we live in. There's so many board games that yeah. are released. A lot of noise. Marketing is huge. Yeah. Now, green inbox is a yeah. uh, something I saw on your page. I noticed this on another campaign that hit over a million dollars, the uh, Bristol thirteen fifty. What what role did they play, or how did they kind of link in? Or can you explain to people what that is? Yeah, so they also were on the Nemesis campaign that just finished up. Um, green inbox, they they do Facebook marketing, but they're professionals at it. It's basically all it is, and so they have. Uh, they have their their targets and then this really targeted ads so basically you give them a bunch of assets and then um they come back and uh and just and then you they, they charge per purchase so i was just i pulled up the numbers i think they did i think we can attribute roughly a hundred thousand ish in sales to oh. them which is like that's that's not insignificant. They they did, no. they, did they did a good job. You it's know, bigger than paid, a lot of people's campaigns, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we paid them handsomely. Um, yeah. and funnily enough, I actually used them on Last One Standing when they were just getting started. Okay. So that was my connection with uh with the guy there. And uh and it it like crashed and burned in Last One Standing. I don't think I, I made like a hundred bucks from them. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and so if, if, if you don't have a game that resonates with people, it's not going to work. So it's not the magic bullet, obviously. It's, uh, it's a culmination no. of many, many tools. Yeah. So like, yeah. Where, where, are you, where do you go from here? So you, you've created this game. Yep. It's coming out uh, a year from now. Yeah. And uh, are, you, are you working on other games in the meantime? Are you looking at creating expansions for this kind of? What does the future kind of uh, look like for you? Yeah. So the... The primary um, or the priority is Akarios. We are, um, we're, we're just running through development. There's lots of stuff still to go. And most of it is our, is our story content and then balancing the storyline. And so the plan is to be finished everything by Christmas and have the files off to printer um, by March. And so that time between Christmas and March is a lot of further, like we're always play testing, but it's further play testing. Cause it's, it's a different beast play testing a campaign game than it is oh, yeah. play testing anything else. Um, and so that's gonna, that's gonna happen there. Uh, and then we'll launch, we'll hopefully people will be getting it next summer. Um, so yes, the, the plan is to do some follow-up expansions to Akarios. We're looking forward to those. I have another game um, kind of in, in the background work that I'm just kind of plugging away at once in a while. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm sorry, but, uh, it's, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely unrelated to Akarios. Um, sure. I'm not, I'm not too sure of the demographic overlap. There might be some, uh, but, uh, right now priority number one is, uh, is Akarios. So. And, and that's something I hear a lot with, uh, game designers specifically you talk to where, they're working on their current campaign, but behind the scenes, there's two or three other ideas that they're kind of cultivating and at various stages. And as you're saying earlier on, which I think is very astute that, um, you know, you'll have something that maybe you've been tinkering around with for several years. And uh, when it gets time to crunch time, then, then you start kind of putting the serious hours into it. But that kind of exploratory um, uh, feel is, is certainly, uh, you know, an essence of the process. So 
Yeah, that's totally. cool. So good for you guys. So once again, I just want to say congratulations. The half hour blasted by, but I tell you, I learned something every time I'm having one of these conversations. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, maybe we can have you back uh, just before uh, you guys send your files off next year and let us know if uh, there's any changes or any major things that happened that uh, there are learnings we can maybe pass on to some other people. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, James. Thanks again for your time, man. Eh? Cheers. All right. Take, take care. care.